Greetings, welcome to my channel. I am Mr. Sean, and this is a cooking show. Yeah, I'm not. I don't got my cook. I'm not in my kitchen right now. I'm sorry. Uh, there's a reason for that. You'll find out sh sh shortly why. I'm doing a lot of research about this because. Well, we'll get to this. I have a wonderful compilation of recipes today. We are going to be going through the Gungaloosh drink. That was wonderful tasting. We're going to go through the Iron Forge rations. Awesome. With some caveats to that. Um, sorry. There's going to be a few caveats in this <laughs> in this series today. I'm sorry. But Iron Forge rations and Blood Braid Tart to finish off. Let's, let's start this thing. It's beautiful. Gungaloosh. All right. So we're putting in some white grape juice, apple juice, some melon soda. And pineapple juice, cranberry juice. If you want to be decorative, you can add the orange wheel to the side, but I'm um, gonna be simple. Okay, Iron Forge rations. First off, I couldn't find any haggis. I, I looked, I didn't find any can no, nor a substitute for haggis at the store, so I figured I'd make some. I found a recipe down in the links below Scotland's EnchantingKingdom.com pretend haggis. And one thing I couldn't find is for this easy pretend haggis was lamb liver. I couldn't find that either. I'll be throwing in one pound of ground lamb, finely chopped red onion, one large egg, three quarter teaspoon salt, three quarter teaspoon black pepper, half teaspoon sugar, one quarter teaspoon ground ginger, one eighth teaspoon ground clove, one eighth teaspoon ground nutmeg, some water, so mixing them all together. Six ounces of steel cut oats. Putting the mixture into a greased loaf tin. Baking it off for 45 55 minutes in a, in a 350 degree oven. Now back to World of Warcraft. Let's get there. Where we will melt some butter in a frying pan. Now I'm adding a, the fresh haggis I just made. Breaking it up. I'm adding the some flour. And a little bit of ginger beer to help thicken and make a gravy. Oh, before this. I gotta make some Moldor spice bread. But I've already done that before, so here, here's the end. Putting the mixture on to the bread. Taking the cheese, putting it on top of the bread. Throwing it under the broiler for a few seconds to melt the cheese. And now, ready to serve. Bloodberry tart. I will not be going through this recipe like I've done the others. Because I had issues making this dessert. Which is why this video is late in uploading. This recipe has two parts. Making the flaky pie dough and the bloodberry tart filling. Which you'll be seeing on screen. I had issues starting at the pie dough, ending at the tart filling. Also, it is winter time, meaning I bought berries out of season, which costed at least $14 for two pounds total of raspberries and blueberries. This made the pie a fairly expensive mistake. I need to mention that the WoW cookbook I own is the October 16 version. This cookbook has been restocked on Amazon and other sites, 
but they've had small revisions made, such as Dragon Breath Chili is no longer missing an ingredient, which has been identified as cinnamon and cocoa powder, so I can't wait to make the chili again. So there have been changes to it, but I don't have that book. Um, I'll be getting it soon. Anyway, I decided to take the time to research how other tarts and pie doughs are made to, in, to, to compare them to a Bloodberry tart. Here's what's happened. After following the two recipes precisely, I had two blood tart pies, a nine inch square pan, and a small individual tart pie. Both pies showed the same problems. The pie dough wasn't flaky, and the filling were extremely sugary, beyond sugar levels of jam or jelly. I mean, it was just incredible. First, the flaky pie dough. I searched for other flaky recipes online. In comparison to three similar recipes, I found one common difference. The Warcraft cookbook rolled out the dough three times, but the internet recipes only rolled them out once. It's a small difference, but at the time that I was making it, it was a major concern of mine. Which the problem came to fruition, the dough was worked too much, too thoroughly, and became tough as wood. That's a simple fix, just roll it out once. Next, the blueberries. I don't think this recipe needs one pound of blueberries. The aftermath showed me that the pie was more blueberry than anything. Which, if you look at the picture, it shows a good level of berry and raspberry ratio. So let me ex quick explain the filling. You take one pound of raspberries, heat them up in a, in a stove pot, then you crush them in order to strain out all the juice. You take that back into the pot, just the juice. You mix it with pectin, balsamic vinegar, cardamom, sugar, and the blueberry. These ingredients are then brought to a boil and cooled down in order to be placed into the flaky pie dough pan. So once you're ready, you then drop the filling in and then you cook them until the dough is golden and the filling is bubbling, i.e. boiling yet again. This made the poor blueberry pretty wrinkly on top. Not, you know, beautiful looking in that sense, after the second cooking. So when I try this recipe again, I intend to reduce the amount of blueberries, probably to just a half pound. The half pound looked good. And I will drop them into the pie pan for the oven cooking phase. I don't think it's necessary for the boiling phase. Finally, the blueberry tart gelling process. Wait, I thought I said that it was too sugary. That was the other problem, right? I don't know, let me explain. The problem I had was way too sugary and sweet, and ultimately it had no tart flavoring. I'll play a word here. The two cups of sugar were used to assist in the gelling process. This recipe uses pectin. Pectin requires lots of sugar and an acid. So pectin had sugar and balsamic vinegar in order to complete the gelling. And I do believe the process worked, but has a large drawback of all that sugar content. So there's three questions to this issue. Can I find, number one, can I find a better pectin to sugar to vinegar ratio by cutting the sugar down to make it still sweet, but not you know, di you know, diabetic levels. Second question I have, there are other thickeners out there. Looking into those recipes that I found, and mo a few more, I found the common ingredients to be cornstarch from the thickening agent. And there are other starches you can use. You can use flour, uh, arrowroot starch was one I found in, on several recipes. Another product I had not heard of was called Clear Gel, which is apparently the best out of them all because it doesn't, it's not affected by the cooking processes. You can cook it several times and it doesn't care, which I don't know if pectin can be cooked twice like it has. And so basically there are alternatives which could kick out pectin, thereby I can reduce the sugar content greatly. Third, why pectin at all? Because I found an internet page which, which explains fruits naturally produce pectin. Some are better than others, but raspberries is in the group which, if properly ripened, will not need pectin, only sugar to activate it. So these are my issues I have with the blueberry tart. I did not resolve them in this video because it's really expensive right now. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't want to test it out. But this leads me to announce a future segment which I've been thinking about already called Beyond the Cookbook. This will address the issues and explore the possibilities to make the best Bloodberry tart. More than that, I intend to use this segment to explore other uses of the recipes, like a little more spice bread, 
How about as a French toast? Or Mulgar Spice Pizza Dough? Would that be a good idea? Additionally, I'm looking to adapt other in-game recipes to the real world. So make, I want to make some more fan-made recipes. So that's the idea of that future segment. Look forward to them. Welcome back. So I'm sorry for not doing a real good job with the Bloodberry Tart this time. Um, really looking forward to the Haggis. But uh, you can't find it. I couldn't find, I couldn't find it anyways. And I couldn't find out even the substitute in, in the stores that I go to. So... I did the best I could with what I have right now. Hopefully I gave a pretty good, succinct answer as to why the Bloodberry Tart didn't do so well. But please let me know down in the comments below how you like my explanation. If I wasn't clear about something, uh, please let me know. I'll try to ex find a better way to say it and get my, get my message across. That it's definitely, this is the first recipe that's actually had major problems for me. So, I don't know if it's user error, but for this time, it, it there is a problem. I'll explain. I'll expand upon the issue in a future episode beyond the cookbook segment and I will explore many more things in those as well. So thank you for watching. Please like this video. Please comment below. Please subscribe so you can see more of my videos, more of my let's plays that are coming up, uh, more unboxings, more cooking, lots more cooking to come, whether it be wow or beyond the cookbook segments. Thank you for being with me tonight. Ciao.